Kickstart Clear Communication. Hi, welcome. This is the fourth lesson of the course. And during conducting the interviews that Jordan and I did um, to find out what people want to learn, we found out that the desire that most people have, the biggest desire, is to learn to communicate clearly. And although many lessons in this course are in some way related to clear communication, and so um, it's not just this lesson that's on clear communication, but just to give you something really valuable early on in the course, we decided to have this kickstart clear communication in your relationships lesson. I hope you're excited. Um, and during this lesson, if you can't apply it all yet, don't worry, you have many more lessons to go and they will all help you as well. All right, in this lesson, you will learn to show what's inside, to not let things go unsaid, to communicate your feelings, to communicate your desires, to communicate your nose, to communicate your triggers, and in general, to see that communication is a working together thing and how to not accidentally sabotage that working together. Show what's inside. Often we would like to see more of what's inside the other person, but you can only start with you. So if you want to communicate more openly with each other, the best chance you have is to show more of what's inside of you. Be as authentic and vulnerable as you can be. If that sounds super scary to you, just take it slow, take, take little steps. For example, say you're on a date and this person first seemed so interested in you and then after a while, uh, the person starts acting more distantly. Well, maybe you just can ask. Maybe you can ask this person, um, has anything changed? Or am I interpreting your behavior right? And I know from my own experience, all kinds of stuff can be going on in the other person. So don't make your own interpretation yet and just ask. Uh, let them know the confusion that's inside of you. And it's such a beautiful, authentic, open thing to show confusion that's inside of you. Often people, me included, have, I have tried to hide my confusion a bit, as if confusion is something to be ashamed of. But uh, the actual thing is that confusion is a very adorable thing to notice in someone else. And the only way to get out of the confusion is to show it and just ask for clarification. Another example, say it's your mother's birthday and you really don't know what present to buy her. You feel like you have to buy her a present, but actually what you really wanna do is just show up with all your love and give her a really long hug. Nothing weird about it. You can just tell her oh, what's inside of you instead of buy another present that she maybe doesn't even want to have. Answer questions as authentic, vulnerable and open as you can. If you want to show more of what's inside of you, a fun thing is to start answering questions as authentic and vulnerable and open as you can. You might be afraid that people reject you for giving your real and elaborate answers. And I just want to relate a personal story because I had a time in my life where I had a lot of vaginal infections, which is usually something in this society that's regarded as um, a topic you don't share about. <laughs> and when people ask me, how are you doing? And it's friends. Or maybe maybe it's um, I was I was studying at the time, so maybe it's other fellow students. I don't want to hide, you know, how I'm really feeling. I cannot say I'm I'm doing great. So I would just answer, 
I'm not doing so well today because I have a vaginal infection. And then people, people would just love it, you know, the fact that I, I share myself so openly. I really can tell from my own experience, people love it when you're vulnerable with them. People love it when you're open with them. People love it when you feel safe enough in their presence to dare to be authentic. Sharing something like that is like a compliment for this other person. Ideally, your relationships involve only people who really want to know you. And so there is no too much information. So I'm saying that most people do love it when you share yourself. And if you do have friends somehow that don't like it when you share yourself, it's just um, a great moment to recognize that you might be in a friendship that's not serving for you. And recognizing that is a great step, a great first step to find friendships with people with whom you're more compatible. Talk, talk, talk. The point is really to talk, talk, talk. Too many things in relationships go unsaid. And to illustrate this point, I want to tell you a personal story. There have been two specific men in my life that I loved and who left their physical bodies early. One of them was a friend of mine during high school and I was in love with him for some years. And on the moment that he committed suicide, I had still never really spoken my heart. And I wish I had. And the other man was Jordan, the man whom I'm, I've been making this course with, who inspired me to, to do this, what I'm doing right now. And um, in my relationship with him, I was the opposite. I often pushed myself a little bit to share the things that I was um, maybe afraid of sharing or I shared what I was confused of, I shared what I felt guilty for, I shared what I felt ashamed of. I just, I just really pushed myself to share everything that was inside. And on the moment that I got the news that he had died, the first thought that crossed my mind was I am so happy that no love has been unexpressed and no words have been unsaid. Because we shared so much all the time, it felt like he could have died at any moment and or I could have died at every moment and the relationship was a completed work of art. If nothing goes unsaid, if nothing goes unresolved, if no love goes unspoken, then the relationship is complete in every moment. And it's such a beautiful feeling. And for me personally, it has really helped me to come to terms, make peace with his death. So that's for how valuable it is to keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. But I know from my own experience and I see it in others that it can be very hard sometimes to speak certain things. So let's take a look at the different reasons why talking feels difficult at times. And while going through these reasons, make sure to reflect on your own relationships. Do you recognize yourself in the following? So first reason, why many things go unsaid is because we make the assumption that the other person will have understood without you explicitly telling them the actual thing. When you think there's no need to talk about something, remind yourself that your logic is not their logic. Even if your spouse has been with you for already 20 years, there is no reason to assume that, that, that they can read your mind. So say that someone has agreed 
you thought at least that someone agreed upon doing something for you. And then this person doesn't do it. Don't just assume that either this person is an asshole or maybe you are unlovable or you are not worthy. Um, don't make any assumptions. Just go up to this person and say, hey, in my, percep in my perception, I thought we agreed on you doing this thing and you didn't. Did I misunderstand? Or did something change? So give the other person the opportunity to explain where the communication broke down. Don't let things go unsaid because you assume that their logic is your logic and it's all the same and they can read your mind. They cannot. Explain, explain, explain. Make sure that you understand each other. A second thing that uh, makes things go unsaid is that we feel wrong, silly, insecure, ashamed, or guilty for sharing certain things. Do you want to wallow around in those feelings? Or do you want to get it out there, open things up, finally share what's inside, and just see what happens? Be courageous, surrender. And a tip for this, when you find it scary, is just to start out with saying, I feel uneasy to talk about this, or maybe you want to say, I feel scared, or I feel uncomfortable talking about this. But I do want to tell you that fill in the blank. And in this way, if you share that you have a hard time starting to talk, then this other person will likely feel more compassion with you, will give you probably your time to find your words, will probably be more supporting, will probably really appreciate that you take a courageous step to share something that's difficult for you to share. And in that way, you're really benefiting the relationship. So you might as well get back some gratitude for that. Beautiful, right? Another reason why many things go unsaid is because we're not yet completely sure what to say. And that's actually a great way to start out a conversation. You can just start out with, I'm not sure yet what I precisely want to say, but I do want to talk about it. Maybe you want to talk about with your partner about the sex you're having. You can just start with, I want to talk about the way we have sex, um, but I'm not yet completely sure what to say. I have my own thoughts not super straight yet. Beautiful. Beautiful way to start a conversation. Another reason why things go unsaid is fear of rejection. Especially if it comes to romantic love, people have a really hard time speaking their hearts because they feel so vulnerable to, to be rejected in that part of themselves. To maybe say to someone, I love you, and not get an I love you back. And again, I want to relate a personal story. This is a lesson with a lot of personal stories. Um, and the story is to to illustrate how beautiful it can be to be rejected. So at some point I was in love with a friend of mine and I was about to I was about to leave the country for a long period of traveling. So I decided at some point I'll just I'll just tell him in length all about my feelings. And uh, it was a wonderful experience for me to to speak my heart so much. And although he was not open to, uh, to a connection in the same way that I had desired, I was so at peace with it because I had done all that was in my power to do. Sharing yourself completely brings a whole new level of gratification into your life. Ask yourself right now, is there anything important in my relationships that I want to talk about? 
And pause here the video for a moment and take your time to answer this question for yourself. And ask yourself as well, how can I start that conversation? Because for many people, the start of the conversation is the hardest. The moment of getting yourself to say, I want to talk about something, or I want to tell you, fill in the blank. So ask yourself now as well, how can I start that conversation? All right, I hope you feel excited about starting that conversation. There will be a more practical exercise as well at the end of the lesson, but this is um, already to give you some something to chew on, something exciting that you can actually change in your relationships to grow more skilled, to grow more skillful, and um, to kickstart that clear communication. Let's move on to the next section which is called communicate your feelings. A key ingredient in keeping communication peaceful is to share from your own heart. So don't be authentic by saying, asshole, you're too late again. <laughs> I can't act that. <laughs> um, yeah, be authentic in a way by saying, hey, I thought we had agreed on an on another time earlier than you got here uh, what's what's going on it makes me feel unimportant and sad so that's a way to to keep the communication close to your own heart share about yourself and your feelings not about the other person and what they have done Let's take a look at a fun exercise that will make you see the beauty of sharing feelings and that will also help you to practice sharing feelings. And you can do this one-on-one -on -one with a loved one. I recommend you do it with, a, with someone like um, a romantic partner or a family member or a friend. And um, the instruction is simply to share only feelings back and forth. And it goes in the format of um, one person says, I feel X. And then the next person says, when you said you felt X, I felt Y. And so forth. So, for example, I feel disconnected. When you said you felt disconnected, I felt sad. When you said you felt sad, I felt compassion. When you said you felt compassion, I felt love. When you said you felt love, I felt happy. So keep doing this and remember that all feelings are welcome. If you feel a little bit awkward about asking someone to play this game with you, um, a gentle way to do this can be to say something along the lines of, hey, I'm doing a course to improve my relationship skills. And I feel a little bit awkward about it, but would you be willing to help me by doing a little exercise with me? It's about sharing feelings. So that's one way to do that. And also remember that whenever something new like this feels edgy, you're just expanding your comfort zone, you're learning, you're practicing skills, you're getting better. Communicate your desires. If there's anything that makes a relationship dull and unfulfilling, it's not expressing your desires. And there can be many reasons for not expressing your desires. And it often has to do with the way we are brought up and all the strange social rules that society fosters. Do you feel like you are not allowed to communicate your desires? Are you afraid to be seen as egotistical, over-demanding, spoiled, inappropriate, greedy? Or are you afraid of rejection? 
So become aware of what's holding you back to express your desires. And ask yourself, are those, des are those reasons reasonable? And odds are they're not. Here are some new truths for you. You are worthy. You have a good, innocent heart. You deserve to fulfill your heart's desires. Communicating desires is such a beautiful way to get to know each other more and to connect more deeply. You are allowed and empowered to ask the other person if they want to help you fulfill your desires. And the other person is allowed and empowered to say yes, no, or negotiate. No desire is too weird or too shameful to be communicated. Through Jordan I met the sex positivity movement and that movement very beautifully states whatever consenting adults agree on is positive. I'll repeat that. Whatever consenting adults agree on is positive. And you can apply this truth, of course, wider than just sex. Some examples of daring to express your desires. If you want to receive a massage from someone, you don't have to complain about your back pain and wait for the other person to offer you. You can just ask, would you like to give me a massage? I would like to receive one. And if you feel bad about asking something for yourself, remind yourself that the other person can just say no. The other person is fully empowered to say no, but they might as well say yes, because the pleasure can be on both sides. Another example, if you want to try out a a role play with your sex partner. Feel free to ask. It's a beautiful way to let the other person see more of who you are. And even if this other person doesn't want to do this with you, then still it's beautiful that you expressed your desire and you're not wrong for asking something that the other person doesn't want. It only means that this desire is not compatible with this person. That's all it means. That's all it means. So don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel afraid of rejection. Because you are not rejected. You are not rejected. The only thing that became clear was that a certain desire of you was not compatible with this other person. No desire is too extreme. A last example. A desire that's often viewed as too extreme is when in a relationship, a monogamous relationship, um, one of the partners feels a desire to have another lover. I often see that those kind of desires are most often there, but they're not welcome at all to be showed. So people keep it secret that they actually fancy someone else as well. And wouldn't it be connecting actually for the relationship to not keep those things secret, but to share yourself openly. And if you want to allow for such freedoms, if you want an open relationship, a polyamorous relationship, isn't it beautiful to be able to talk about that? So, no desire is too extreme. That's the lesson. Communicate your no's. Not saying no when you feel a no is a fast way to kill love and replace that sweet love with bitter resentment. There's a common belief that in relationships you need to make compromises. My last monogamous boyfriend said that to me at some point. He said, in relationships, you need to make compromises. And I was like, really? No, no one has, had ever said that, that literally to me before. And it really got me thinking, do you need to make compromises in relationships? 
and after having given it some thought I really want to say that I don't agree and I hope you can put it aside as well because it is so possible to find fulfilling relationships within the confines of only doing what you both like it's just a matter of finding someone that you're compatible enough with and not doing things with this person that's not in the range of your compatibilities with this person so don't settle don't settle don't compromise don't say yes to things you want to say no to you're never responsible for fulfilling someone else's desire if someone tries to convince you of that fact that you should help them to fulfill their desire don't take it they're being unreasonable for example if your mother wants to go shopping with you and you don't want to don't do it she can just find someone else to go shopping with and even if another example it's your monogamous partner that wants sex with you and so he or she cannot fulfill that desire without you still please don't do it you are in no way obligated whatsoever and you are fully empowered to say no it's nice to explain why you're saying no um, it can help for the other person to understand you and it gives them valuable information as to what kind of requests might work in the future or not but you don't have to explain your no no is already a full sentence a nice mix occurs when you want to say no to something but you do have a desire that comes close to what the other person has asked for in that case, you can make a counter offer. For example, I don't want sex with you, but I do have a desire for emotional intimacy and physical intimacy. What about naked cuddling? So be very clear about what you don't want and what you do want. If saying no is a hard one for you, have a look at the extra lesson on being strong in your no. And if the little part about negotiation sounded very interesting to you, um, then I just want to let you know that in the course Fulfilling Relationships 2, um, which I still have to make, but it's like right now half of the content is written. Um, and there is a lesson already written now um, in that course on negotiation. And for now we move on to the subject Communicate your triggers. Something that makes communication often very messy without both of you even knowing what it was are triggers. So let's quickly recapture what are triggers. Sometimes you might find that you are very emotional um, to the point where you would rationally not expect yourself to be that emotional about something. So, for example, you live together with someone and this person asks you to clean up some of your dirty clothes that are lying on the floor. And although you think it's a reasonable thing to ask, you feel angry and sad and you just want to scream no and throw the clothes into their face. Seems a bit extreme, right? But say that you then remember that in your childhood, your mother would often ask you to clean up your room and she would call you a dirty sloth. And if you, if you wouldn't clean up your bedroom, she would not give you any dinner and you would have to go to sleep with an empty stomach and be all hungry all night. And with that in mind, then suddenly we can understand the the big emotional reaction just from having been asked can you please clean out some of your dirty clothes that are on the floor so a trigger 
is a current situation that reminds you of pain from the past that's still unresolved. How to manage your triggers? Well, first of all, emotions are always valid. So do validate your emotions. They are welcome and they are allowed to be what they are. So don't ever make anyone wrong for feeling what they're feeling. But the point, however, is to not act out on them in any harmful way for the other person. So don't lash out. Instead, you can communicate your feelings. So for example, you can tell your partner, instead of throwing your clothes in their, in their face and screaming no, you can tell them, I feel, I, I feel angry and sad and I feel rejected. And I know it's, I do think it's reasonable from you to ask me, but this is how I'm feeling right now. So notice that there is no finger pointing. There's just sharing what's happening inside of you. The other person did not hurt you. You were already hurt. And this person just reminded you of that unresolved pain that you can now take a look at and heal. Clear, peaceful communication about your triggers like this will probably make the other person feel more compassionate towards you and more supportive so that you can feel what you're feeling. And the only thing that a trigger needs to be healed is enough awareness of it. If you do feel a need for something, like maybe the other person telling you it's just about the clothes, you don't have to feel rejected. Or maybe you want a big hug, ask for it. And other than that, the only thing you need to do is just whenever the trigger comes out, take a good look at it and love yourself through the process. So don't act out on it. Keep the observer perspective and the observer perspective, is, the observer perspective is often thought of as coming from the mind, but please observe with your heart as well. As you keep loving your own heart, whenever the trigger shows up, the past loses its power over you. And the other person can get triggered, of course, as well. So when you notice the other person becoming disproportionately upset, they likely got triggered. If they act out on it, if they lash out at you in a non-acceptable way, <laughs> don't accept it. You don't have to be treated bad because someone else got triggered. So draw clear boundaries here. Um, but in any other way, if you can support them, and if you want to support them, do so by letting them know that, hey, I see you got really upset about this and I want to support you. Do you think it's because of what I did or is there maybe more underneath it? And so you can help them start the exploration journey for themselves and become aware of this trigger. It's not a, a, your responsibility, however. So, yeah, it's just so you know. It's not your responsibility to help them, you know, process all, all, their, all their shadows and resolve all the things in them. But if you want to, if you want to support them, this is how you can. Sorry, there's a fly on me. <laughs> You see that the red line of the clear communication story is still talk, talk, talk. As this will build a bridge between your insight and the other person's insight. Don't keep secrets from your own teammates. If you're in a relationship with someone, you are both trying to make it work. If not, I would suggest you get out of there, but otherwise, Normally, in most relationships, there is a common goal and whether that's to have a good time with friends or whether it's a very functional 
client-dentist relationship or whether it's trying to make a really beautiful love relationship work. There's always something that's keeping you together, a common goal. And so you are a team. The common goal should always be at least to connect, respect each other and share activities that you both want to engage in with each other. Teamwork is hard without clear communication. This is very clear at work, but people often forget that it also applies to relationships. So if you find a problem in your relationship with someone, you don't have to keep it to yourself and figure it out on your own. You can share it with your teammate. You have a teammate and you can share about whatever problem you find and see if you can solve it together. And this will only make the connection stronger. I'll tell you a personal story. I last want to um, end this video with. For most of my life, I have felt as if I should figure out all problems on my own and not bother other people with it. And Jordan noticed this tendency in me. And, um, and he asked me to start sharing whatever problem I encountered because he felt that if I wouldn't share the problems I found in our relationship, then it was also his problem, but he wouldn't get a chance to contribute to finding a solution. And I found that such a beautiful way of looking at it. And although I really had the pattern of only sharing about the problem when I had already found out what the solution was and how this other person needed to cooperate with that solution, like only, only if I really had the solution, then I would tell. And otherwise, I was just figuring it out on my own. But it's... It, it has literally moved me to tears to feel the beauty of really being a team and feeling that whatever I find a problem with is welcome. And I asked him, even if I don't really even know what the problem exactly is, and he would say yes. And I would say, what if I feel disconnected and I don't, I don't even know why? Then he would say, well, then you share that you're feeling disconnected and you don't know why. Oh yes, it's that simple. And so it clicked. So that's about being a team, being a team, solving problems together. And for that, you really need clear communication. In this lesson, you have learned the importance of showing what's inside of you, to keep talking, 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 to communicate your feelings, your desires, your no's and your triggers, and to operate as a team with the person you're in relationship with. In the next course, Fulfilling Relationships 2, we have a whole lesson on vulnerability and um, communicating authentically. And in this course, later on, we have some lessons on communicating respectfully and non-judgmentally. And for now, the next lesson, I hope to see you there. And before you go there, have a look at the exercise if you want to because it will help you to ground the knowledge from this lesson more practically into your life so that you can actually apply this and have it, have it work in reality. Isn't that exciting? All right, have a great day.